Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now, in the last video, we worked on figuring out the component form of a vector. Remember, it's a, a very useful way to write a vector down in terms of its horizontal and vertical components. And now that we have that, we can start talking about algebraic operations on vectors in component form. So let's say we have these two vectors, u, which is a1b1, and v, which is a2b2. And let's let C be any real number. We'll call that a real scalar. So a scalar is just some real number that we're going to use to multiply uh, to a vector. And we'll see that multiplication here in a moment. Then we have these three operations. And it's really two operations. Um, but we have u plus v is going to be the sum of the horizontal components of u and v for the horizontal component of the sum of u and v. So in other words, if u is a1, b1, v is a2, b2, then u plus v is a1 plus a2 for my horizontal component and b1 plus b2 for my vertical component. Now I'm going to go a little out of order. Let's look at this last one now. Um, this last one is our multiplication by a scalar. If I have some re real scalar c and I multiply that to the vector u, the resultant vector is going to be c multiplied to the horizontal component and c multiplied to the vertical component. So c times the vector a1, b1 is the vector c, a1, c, b1. Now this one in the middle, this is our difference or subtraction. We have the vector u minus v is a1 minus a2 for my new horizontal component and b1 minus b2 for my, for my new vertical component. So we take a difference and that turns into the difference of horizontal components and the difference of vertical components. Now the reason I did it in that order, even though I wrote it in a different order, is that we really just have two operations here. We have addition and we have multiplication by a scalar and subtraction is just combining these two together. What I'm doing is I'm doing addition on the vectors u plus the vector v multiplied by the scalar negative 1. So real I'm doing addition here, but I multiplied v by the scalar negative 1 so negative v then is going to be, by my third operation, negative a2, negative b2. And then taking the sum of these two vectors gives me this difference formula here. So let's go ahead and do an example first before we start looking at the properties of these operations. Let's say we're given a couple vectors. u is the vector 5, 7, v is the vector 4, negative 3, and c is the real scalar 2. And we're asked to find u plus v, u minus v, and cu. So let's go ahead and jump in. My u plus v by our formula I'm just going to be adding the relative components or the respective components. So I'm going to add the horizontal components. u has a horizontal, horizontal component of 5 v has a horizontal component of 4, and I'm going to add the vertical components, 7 plus negative 3, and I get this sum. The vector u plus v is the vector 9, 7 plus negative 3 is 4, so we get the vector 9, 4. Now u minus v, by our formula, I'm going to take the horizontal component of u and then subtract from that the horizontal component of v, and I'm going to take the vertical component of u and subtract from that the vertical component of v. So this difference, u minus v, is going to be the vector 1, and then I have 7 minus a negative 3, so that's 10. All right, one more. Cu, here Cu, that's just 2u, so my c is 2, and what we do here is we take our scalar, we're multiplying to the vector, and we multiply it by each component. So this is going to be 2 times the horizontal component, 5, 2 times the vertical component, oh, 7. And so we get this vector 2u is equal to the vector 10, 14. Now remember from our previous video when we geometrically kind of defined what these operations are. Um, this last operation, scalar multiplication, it makes the vector grow in length, shrink in length, it can make it change directions by exactly 180 degrees, so going exactly the opposite direction, 
but it cannot change the angle theta um, it can't change the direction that the vector is facing okay alright now let's take a look at some properties now that we've had a little example on how we use these operations we have several properties for these operations for the addition operations and first I guess let's say uh, let's let u, v, and w be vectors and here I'm going to let c and d be real numbers or real scalars so for my addition operation I have that u plus v is equal to v plus u so this is a commutative addition it's also associative so u plus the sum v plus w is the same as the sum u plus v plus the vector w now before I do these last two take a look at my little note down here this zero with the arrow on top of it we call that the zero vector and that's the vector where all of the entries in the vector are just zero okay now the way that you would draw this vector is it's actually just a dot at the point zero zero but let's go ahead and take a look at what happens when we incorporate zero into our operations the vector u plus the zero vector is just equal to the vector u this makes sense because I'm adding the components of u to zero by my addition formula u plus negative u or u plus the vector u multiplied by the scalar negative one gives me the zero vector also very intuitive from our subtraction formula now let's take a look at multiplication by a scalar multiplication by a scalar we have two different distribution properties if we have a scalar c multiplied by the sum u plus v we can distribute c and we get cu plus cv if we have the sum of scalars c plus d multiplied to some vector u we can also distribute u over these scalars so we get cu plus du and this uh, scalar multiplication is associative and commutative so I can multiply cd first if I have this product and then multiply that to u I can multiply d to u first and then multiply c to the result or I can multiply c to u first and then multiply d to the result and we have a couple of other scalar properties here the scalar 1 multiplied by any vector u is just the vector u the scalar in other words the real number 0 so this 0 right here this isn't the vector 0 but the real scalar 0 multiplied by any vector u gives us the 0 vector any scalar c multiplied by the 0 vector gives us the 0 vector and the magnitude of the vector cu is equal to the absolute value of c multiplied to the magnitude of u and all of these are very intuitive go ahead and plug any of these um, with some actual numbers into the formulas up here for the operations and you'll see these jump out at you uh, right away they're all very easy to check alright so those are our operations now in the next video we're going to talk about unit vectors and in particular two very special unit vectors in two dimensions that help us to write to these vectors in their component form in a slightly different way. And we'll see you there.